morning, everybody. Chad, out the farms. We're gonna try something this morning. Go in the gear. It's gonna be interesting. If you're new here, welcome and howdy. If you're old here, welcome and howdy. This is our Q Catch 8700 series sent to us from AeroQuip. It's amazing and awesome. I'm putting a concrete pad over there so I can sit that on top of it. And then there's gonna be a scale that goes underneath it. I think the scale's from Gallagher, who is also a sponsor of the channel. These panels, they're stinking awesome. They're 150 pounds a piece. They're hard to move. They're heavy duty, heavy pressure, I guess is the term. They're 10 footers, some eight footers. I got some gates, but anyway, I've just been feeding around here, trying to get the animals used to these things. And if you saw my little short yesterday, uh, I got a new truck and I parked it in there and actually kept my truck safe during feeding time. But I'm just doing what I'm told by the old ranchers and farmers at the gas station down the road and the feed store, just getting these animals used to the panels. So let's throw some cubes. I think I'm gonna actually pour some inside because like I said, they're heavy, heavy pressure. Check it out. Ah, Finn, listen, dude, you're so tall. What is the deal? Hey, you gotta come in here. You guys might be like, that's dangerous. All them horned animals are too close together. It's a huge space, guys. That's a 800 pound cow all day long. Probably four to six, four to six. He might be close to a grand. Tipsy. But I'm getting ready to, I'm gonna do it off camera, but I'm gonna kick that panel out so they do have a an exit. They're not like trapped over here. All right, so we gave them a big wide berth now. That's probably every bit of 24 feet because that's 10 foot and that's 10 foot. And if I swung them together, they wouldn't even touch. So it's over 20 feet. Tipsy is my most careful cow not this not it's not cj he's kind of a let's call him a bonehead he's just he's kind of a, he's kind of a squirrel he's my resident fence tester though but hi sugar come here come on come on she's just an extremely intelligent tipsy Woo! come on cow come on Here, let's see if I can move her with the uh, side by side. There we go. She wanted me to move. That was the issue. She's like, I ain't doing it, man. I ain't doing it. There we go. All right. So in case you're new, here's a little play-by-play. -play. That's Frank the Tank. His daddy was supposed to be Fred. This is Junebug, that's his mom. But Junebug went and visited the neighbor's Angus Bull. So Franklin here, we call him Frank the Tank because obvious reasons. He's a Highland Angus. This is Oreo. She's a, she's a goat dog. That's Patrick. Oh, Franklin was born May 12th. Patrick was born March 17th. He's a Longhorn Bull as well bull calf right now you've met tipsy this is finn so finn is actually probably going to be on the farm for a long time because he's beautiful and he's sweet a really good demeanor and we learned from our friends aaron and kylie at lone rock ranch where all our longhorns came from that there's a term probably i mean it's outside of longhorns but i mean there's a term called a gomer bull or a goober whatever you want to say gomer pile is what i'm trying to say Finn is banded so he can't breed 
Uh, his genes were not as highly sought after as like another bull on the farm for the for Lone Rock Ranch. So we bought him as a steer. But being a gomer bull, just because he's banded doesn't mean he can't tell when a female's in heat. So if you have a prized bull that you want to breed to your heifers or your cows, Finn here, this lighter colored one, you put him with your girls, your heifers and your cows, and when he starts doing that old Flemin, Felmer, Flemini, Floppity, whatever that thing is, it's a, called like a Flemin smile, I think. When he does that, you know that some of your girls or all of them are in heat. So he's gonna be here a while. Well, I should say we have two cows and two heifers. That's Sonny. This is Finn, who we were just talking about. And this is Bunny. You can ride Bunny. We've got Brucifer. What's up, buddy? Are you not gonna go in there with the cows? Hey, you know what? If you guys didn't eat cubes, you'd probably eat all these weeds. So I'm not that disappointed that you don't want to go in there and knock knock, knock horns. Mm-hmm. He'll figure it out. He'll go in there. Legit, he ain't scared of nothing. He has no idea that he weighs 200 pounds. <clears throat> and if you think I'm kidding, we get that scale, we're going to weigh that old boy. I guarantee he's above 150 pounds. I've held him. Okay. Snap. CJ st still trying to figure out how to get in there, man. Dottie. Ginger. CJ, you got to go around, brother. Got to go around. Nope. Yep. I'm trying to help you. Keep moseying. Keep on going. See how gentle they are coming from Lone Rock. You raised some good animals. I say gentle. Any of them horns will kill you. Let's be honest. But being used to a pin and a shoot and all that. Yeah, well, CJ, that was kind of silly. Why would you go over there and take her? Why? I would never walk over to Tipsy and be like, hey, you want to share breakfast? Man. Look at that view. Look at that Oklahoma sky. My goodness. Woo. If you'll notice, the alpacas are missing, which is not uncommon. They don't come down here and tuffle with everybody here during breakfast time. But the donkeys usually do. But they're not down here right now because there's a main attraction up at the top of the hill. So without further ado, let's go take a little look-see. Here comes one of them. Little donk, my brother. What's up, man? Congratulations. Congratulations, Daddy. Come here, it's okay. <laughs> so here's the deal. He's my buddy, but he is really mad at me. If you didn't know, males, when a baby is born, get really jealous and really hot to trot. And let's just call it, because I, I, I said the word yesterday at my brother and sister-in-law's, but donklet. There is a new donklet on the farm, a baby donkey. That's what that's what they're called. They're, some people call them foals. Here they're called donklets. And long story short, when the donklet hit the ground, he got real sideways and was not being very nice. So I threw some towels at him. I'm talking like a beach towel because it was white and flowy and it scared him because, you know, it waves in the wind. So I threw one of those at him to shoo him away and just had to do what I had to do. And then we had to pin his girlfriend, Miss Lucy, and the new donklet up to keep them safe from him. And the reason I didn't pin him up is he is our resident coyote crusher. Now that dude was $200 on Craigslist. Best $200 I ever spent. Anyway, he's my resident guardian. And we're normally buddies, but 
had to lock his girlfriend up. He's not real happy with me. Cowboy! Get that ragweed. Get it! That a boy. Donk and donk. Hey, come here, buddy. Come here. Nope, not gonna do it. Part of the reason, well, he was mistreated. He came to our farm. They devocalized him. That's badonkadonk. They devocalized him so he can't bray. He's also gelded, so he's kind of shy. But part of the reason they don't come near me when I'm in the side by side is I bug spray from the side by side. So when they see it, they think they're getting bug sprayed. So, even if you don't see me doing the fly spray, I do it, and I'm pretty good at it. Like, I'm, I pull up when they're eating, and I just sit right beside them and start spraying. They think it's raining for a minute. Oh, look. What's that? <laughs> Stay tuned. Hang on. They think it's raining for a second, then they realize it's uh, bug spray, and they're like, ah, like, ah, like, ah. Rosies. What you doing, lady? All right, I'm getting to the good part. Hang on. This is Miss Rosie. She belongs to Mama, the white one. Mama's pregnant from an alpaca we had named Alan. And there's Miss Tina. Hello, young lady. Miss Tina is pregnant, and I would say she's... Oh, man, I'm going to go a month out. We'll see. About a month. You okay? Your underbite's looking good. Mm-hmm. Boy, use a looker. It's a face only a mama could love. Listen, Alan, I mean, don't don't tell Tina, but Alan, our male, was really good looking. Hoping the hoping the baby takes after daddy. I said what I said. Listen, some of y'all aren't gonna like what I'm about to do. When my lovely wife met me, she learned that I was on Facebook and YouTube and had an audience, of course. And big or small, it is something that you have to get used to. And it's not, uh, it's not always easy, but um, she had a career, not just a job. And when she met me, she decided she wanted to also get her own animals. But she realized how much that took of her time, as well as being a, a mom, an amazing mom, to not only just her boy, but my two sons, so now our sons. Not that the animals fell off of her radar, but when she decided to kind of film and get her own animals, she realized how much time that would take. And she had to make sure that she stayed focused on her career as well. So. I took all her animals under my wing, and I'd say I've done a pretty stinking good job. So her animals plus my animals, and then we decided that it was time after about a year for her to leave her career and come out here and start this YouTube adventure with me. And that was driven on family reasons, like she wanted to be home more. She wanted to see stuff, you know, the boys having school events, her, her career was I'm not going to say it was demanding, but it was like a 7.15 to 5.30, sometimes 6 o'clock at night. So you're talking almost a 12-hour day, four days a week, can't miss, sometimes high stress. Um, you know, that was her career. So there was just a lot of moving parts. And anyway, she decided, we decided to embark on this adventure together. We already owned this 20 acres. We already owned all these animals, but we decided to leave our house in the city and come out here. And I think it's been uh, three months. It has definitely been three months, almost on the nose. Yep. But, oh, hey, hey, today's the 29th. Happy, happy, 
Happy half birthday to our oldest boy, Case. He's 14 and a half today. Look at Uncle Badonkanonk standing guard over here. Back to point. When she decided to leave her career and embark on this, she was like, well, what do I do? Like, I mean, the alpacas, the donkeys, you've kind of taken them on. And I said, no, no, they're still yours. When a donkey hits the ground, the donklet, that's yours. Hits the ground, born, you know what I mean? The alpacas are born. They're yours. That's Ray's Sunny Days. That's your channel. So some of y'all aren't going to like this, but you've got to go over to Ray's Sunny Days if you want to see the donkey. Plus, not just the donkey, but here's how the story goes, and Ray will tell you more in her own words. It was 5 o'clock last night on Friday, okay, 5 p.m. We were out here, our neighbor's feeding. We were doing the rounds because it was really hot, and... I went outside and I started looking around and I saw everybody gathered up. Like everybody was in attendance for something in the lower pasture and I knew it. Everybody but the alpacas. So I cruised down there. I saw this stark white fluffy ball and I thought Oreo had her babies. Oreo's our goat. You saw her. She's stark white. Our, our buck is <laughs> Appaloosa, but he's, he's dotted. He's dapple boar i immediately called ray and i said hey put your shoes on get out here and start filming rushed outside we started filming but here's here's what's so funny you're gonna have to watch ray's video she assumed it was the alpacas because we thought lucy was a little bit further out so she ray zipped up here i mean 100 miles an hour not really in a side by side but flew up the hill pulled up on the alpacas and she was like where's the baby I was like, I didn't say it was a baby alpaca. So, <laughs> what? You know, so we go flying down the hill and we get down there. And then I realized it wasn't Oreo's babies. It was Lucy and Little Donks. So yeah, you gotta go watch that. I'm in this video here because I'm gonna build them a bigger pen. Uh, Ray's got a video to show you. So the top comment down below and in the description is Ray's video and reaction of seeing her animals right as it happens. So. Man, I love and appreciate every single one of you guys. Sincerely can't thank you enough. I've got a lot of work today. I know this video is like, oh, Dad, you showed you're going to tell us about the dog. Listen, this is how I run my channel, okay? You like it. That's what I do, okay? If I told you the end of the story at the beginning of the video, you wouldn't watch. Who would watch that? I wouldn't watch that. That's boring. Y'all be good. Don't work too hard. Don't make it weird. God bless. Deuces. God bless you guys.